Hey everyone, Tom Butwin here. Welcome to Everything Mayor, your favorite John Mayer fan podcast. On today's episode, this week's episode, we're going to take a look at the GQ article where John Mayer is interviewed about a few things. It's very sphere, dead and company focused, and there's some really cool things that I learned about that whole production and Mayer's involvement there. Uh, to no surprise, he is a lot of the genius and a lot of the brains behind what you're seeing happening there at the Sphere or Sphere in Vegas. Uh, but if you're a astute internet consumer, you already know that there is some mention of the new album in this article. And if you haven't seen it, that's okay. We're going to go through the article and we're going to talk about what he says, which I was honestly kind of shocked that he said what he said and put it the way that he did. So we'll get to that very soon. The other thing that you can get to very soon is our very first episode with a guest. It is now available for members of this channel. Uh, so if you have not done so yet, please check out the membership options. For a small monthly fee, you can support the show, support the channel, you get extra content. And of course, you get all these videos before anybody else does. Now, that episode will come out eventually. I don't know exactly when. Um, Alex and I, Alex is the guest, Alex Meyer from Super Danger Studios. If you're not familiar with him, go check him out. There'll be more about him in this episode coming up. Um, but we're trying to coordinate it with one of his releases. So I don't know exactly when that's going to be. But if you can't wait, become a member, get all of the old back stuff that's there uh, available to only members um, and get this new episode that's coming out soon with our first guest. So do so if you can, and I will sincerely appreciate it. But let's get to this article. We're going to just kind of read through some of it because I do think it's worth uh, actually just straight up reading. Um, so this interview is really cool. I skipped a little bit here, but uh, I think that the pertinent part to, to start here right above this Razor Motorola cell phone ad <laughs> <laughs> is uh, I asked them, that would be Mickey Hart and Bobby Weir, if, and this is Mayor talking, I asked them if I could be the one to organize those things on their behalf. This is uh, their memories and things that they would like represented visually in the Sphere show. Um, in constant contact with them, but then just go back and forth uh, myself with the treatment, which is the production studio um, that produced the visuals for Dead Forever. Uh, and they were really, really good to me. They said, okay, we believe you can do this. And I took that as something I could not fail them on. And so I became what I call surgically obsessed. If you're obsessed correctly, that's how projects happen. And it became my life for four or five months. And part of the reason it made sense for me to do a lot of the heavy lifting was because I live just over the hill from Sphere Studios in Burbank, California, which is, I think it's a one third scale replica of the Sphere where you can demo Sphere content. How cool is that? I had no idea. Did you know about that? Uh, as you're creating content for the Sphere screens, they actually have in California a small mock-up. Really, really cool. Um, but remember that four or five months dedicated to this part. That's going to be relevant later on in the episode today. Um, so I made it a part of my life to go and look at content, make notes. And every time I saw another piece of content and had another feeling about it, I just became more of the conscientious, conscientious pack leader of this idea and making sure that it did right by Bob and Mickey. And it did right by the fans. A lot of people coming to the show knew the music before I knew the music. Always humble, John Mayer. That's a hell of a lot of pressure to get a story right that does justice to the dream, their dreams of what this could be. And from that point, everything got broken out into these blocks. Where are the places we can go? What are the pieces? And they really start as a very rough animatics. Let's skip ahead just a little bit. Um, it's really cool. I mean, it, it's what's what's amazing to me about this. And if you're a John Mayer fan, you know, you know this about Mayer already. He is so totally involved in every aspect of a project. And what I mean by that is, I mean, from the album art to the music video to the clothing people are wearing on stage to the set pieces on stage the lighting the video design uh, obviously the music um just a really really uh incredibly involved artist to the point where uh, i talked to 
um, Fred Green at Martin Guitar. He's uh, John's kind of like guy at Martin Guitar about uh, the most recent OMJM acoustic guitar that uh, had a 20 year anniversary and an update. And, you know, just how involved Mayer was with the photography of that guitar and getting into Photoshop himself to try to make it look as good as it possibly could. And it's like, who does that, you know? Well, someone who gets this involved in the sphere type shows does that. Uh, so back to Mayer's words. Uh, at a certain point, probably back in March, it ended up being on a meta quest headset so sphere entertainment have their own proprietary software where you put the vr headset on and you're in the sphere and you're demoing the content in vr so i traveled with a vr headset and i'd get new downloads and i would just keep giving notes it's really i mean what an amazing revision process uh you know so you're, you're not actually in the venue because it's a very you know particular venue i think you have to view things in but they between the one-third scale model in california and this vr headset you can kind of do that from anywhere. Um, but let's get on to the next portion here. Uh, oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, just summarize the next portion here. He talks about just some of the limitations they found with, uh, I'm sure other bands have found this too, is like there's certain movements with a nearly 365 wraparound screen that you can't do because people are going to be throwing up everywhere. So they had to had to cut some of those things out, <laughs> which uh, is is kind of funny. But um, it's amazing the commitment. Uh, and then I, I do want to get to one portion about his schedule um, during the rehearsals. And if I could just find that, we're going to move there. Um, let's see here. Ah, this is this is probably good. You know, I think it's somewhere between those two things. You can go too far and get one or the other well, what's he talking about right there he's talking about oh just he's comparing space odyssey 2001 uh and star wars and, and whatnot but um old versus new mo motion versus placid for a moment the same way you have songs on a set list that are high energy and then you have to come down and play a ballad it's the same thing visually i'd gotten a few too many headaches looking at a bunch of content back to back that was moving it was like oh this has to breathe so we're going to move a lot in one song. We've got to then give people's brains a break and just watch the band play. So, I mean, that makes sense, right? Um, it's just, I mean, this level of detail for the guitar player in the band, uh, to, you know, I mean, I, I would have to imagine that bands like U2, Fish, the Eagles, who are going to be there later on this year, you know, their, their guys are probably not as involved as John Mayer is. I just, I just wouldn't. I, I don't believe that they would be. Um, but let's get on to the scheduling portion. That's really what I wanted to... Uh, I really wanted to cover that. Ah, here we go, right here. So what's it... Here, the interviewer asks, what's, what was it like spending all those nights inside the sphere as the deadline got closer? John Mayer says, I must have gotten started uh, going there at the end of April, flying into Vegas, but the challenge was that they show this movie postcard from earth all day and i think the last showing is at 10 o'clock p.m or something we couldn't get in there until 11 30 p.m so i would fly to vegas and start working about 11 30 or midnight and go to four in the morning and then sleep in vegas wake up fly back to la but towards maybe five six days before the show we were there a bunch of hours uh, in an empty sphere uh, lights out watching content and we'd be there a really long time and the first two weeks were tough because i would have been up all night wednesday night so i was pulling all nighters so um the, he's he goes, i'm not tiny violining that's that's very funny uh getting on a plane 9 30 at night going to vegas to go straight to the sphere and look at the show that people are going to see in a week for the first time was amazing and sometimes you can just show yourself how much love uh something by how much you're willing to go without sleep for it it's a kind of way of proving to yourself that you love something so credit to treatment who were there much longer than i was and they were running on such a little sleep up to the beginning of the show and beyond and it was that way from january until may 15th and beyond even still we're coming up with some new content for august shows to make sure we keep this percolating as much as we can um so he talks then a little bit more about the end point you know eagles are coming in he obviously doesn't you know put any impossible um terms on uh, returning to the sphere blah 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 you know we i mean who knows they've added so many shows but i mean we we, we do now know that there's an end date because there's another band coming in but let's back up for a second here and talk about the commitment you heard about the hours you heard about his involvement in this and now 
Let's read what he says about his solo album, a new album coming out. And to be honest with you, as I read this, I thought it was one of you writing it, one of you commenters, uh, one of you uh, loyal subscribers who over the last few episodes have basically said that this is what's going on. And it's really interesting. Some people are okay with it. Some people are disappointed in it. But let's read John Mayer in his own words. You've still got a solo career to think about, says Alex, the interviewer. John Mayer says, I'd like to make another record at some point. He laughs. That would be fun. But all that record-making energy, I don't want people to think I'm not making records because I don't want to work. Basically, all the energy I learned how to compile based on making records, I've just been putting behind other things. This Sphere show took as much energy as making a record would make or would take. You come home every night, okay, got to take a break, rest your mind, go to bed, wake up, listen to the mixes again, or in this case, look at the content again, or look at that email. I just really love putting months together to make great things. Very soon, I will put together uh, months to make another album. But I think it's fair to say I'm having too much fun playing around in side quests right now to lament not having a record there you go there you go everybody a lot of you were right i i think we all know that but i mean uh, you know he's having a great time doing what he's doing the dead and company stuff designing this show playing those shows and working on his satellite radio channel um he's doing a lot of stuff because he can and there is no pressure from a record company. So unfortunately, for those of us who want to hear new John Mayer music, that means we're going to have to wait longer. Now, my previous prediction was uh, definitely not 2024. I think that's pretty, it's, it's not really a hot take there. Um, but I thought maybe in, you know, somewhere towards the end of 2025. I don't know now. I'm going to be honest. I mean, hearing that, I don't know. I mean, who who knows? I mean, he's going to have to take a break at some point. We're coming off of the solo tour right into this. Uh, you know, I would imagine there needs to be some kind of a, a little step back at some point. But you know what? Also, also, uh, I mean, as someone who is is running, uh, you know, producing content for three different channels right now, <laughs> uh, sometimes you know what? You don't need to stop. You just kind of keep going and 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 work begets more work and uh, I like working and I would imagine that John Mayer is a similar type personality so maybe we don't need a break John I don't know certainly we don't want you to get burned out but uh, we would love to hear some new songs obviously but I found this to be really interesting a little uh, insight into the amount of involvement he's had with the Sphere shows um, you know I didn't know what his involvement was I didn't know if the band was just showing up playing approving images and then just going for it uh, not so. In typical John Mayer fashion, he completely dove in head first, learned, I'm sure, all about the technology behind the sphere, um, really got involved, and it's it's very cool to see. Uh, it makes me want to see these shows even more. I still don't think it's going to happen. Just too much uh, money, obviously, but also just a commitment to go out there and do that from uh, you know what is almost the East Coast where I am here. Not almost the East Coast, but Midwest, Eastern Midwest. Um it does make me want to see it, though. I'm not going to lie. So, uh, but it also, you know, I, I've, I have the, this like torn feeling inside of me. It's like super exciting to see him do these things that he's super excited about. But it does mean that we're not going to get a solo album anytime soon with new John Mayer music. But that's okay. I'm okay with it. I know a lot of you are not okay with it. So, uh, but tell me, I mean, leave me a comment and let me know, does this insight into what he's been doing change your mind at all? Um, or do you think that after he's done with this, he's going to come up with a new project to get involved in that is not a record because he doesn't have to? I don't know. I mean, will we get a non-album tour before an album? Kind of might be cool, like the 2019 scenario. I wouldn't mind that, to be honest with you, because those tours are a lot of fun. He's not beholden uh, to, you know, to really focus on any particular album. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a wild card. We kind of knew this was going to happen as he became a uh, independent artist. Uh, so it's just interesting to see what he's doing with that newfound independence. Um, so let's go to the after dinner mint at about 15 minutes in here. And the after dinner mint, if you don't know, is the section of the show uh, where things get looser. 
I care less about the algorithm and keeping your attention. And it's for the original people. It's for the, uh, the hardcore fans. It's for the fans who won't click off the video when I take a quick drink of water. Which is necessary when you talk for 15 minutes straight. Um, but it's also named after, uh, thanks to listener, watcher, Trish, the uh, incredible ability that John Mayer has to <coughs> bring in a brand new theme at the end of a song and a last chorus that you've not heard before. Think of belief and the na 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 that type of thing. I mean, it happens in so many of his songs, and it's brilliant. That's why this is called the After Dinner Mint. But for today's After Dinner Mint, uh, I do want to reiterate to those of you who might be listening to this portion um, who are not members yet, and this is not me trying to put the hard sell on, okay? Because trust me, this, this episode is going to come out for free to everybody very soon. But if you can't wait to see me break down my favorite song on every John Mayer studio album with Alex Meyer from Super Danger Studios, our very first guest on Everything Mayer. Sign up for a membership. Uh, you can always cancel after one month, too. I mean, it's so cheap, whatever. But, it, you know, I'm, I'm a terrible salesman, terrible salesman. If I wanted to be a really good salesman, what I would tell you is that I it's never going to come out or I don't know when it's going to come out. I, I really don't know when it's going to come out, but it's going to come out sooner than later. So, it was a super fun episode to film. Uh, I was down in Nashville. We filmed at Alex's studio. So it's a different setting. It's not here. It looks great. It's three camera shoot. Um, he really knows how to light things properly. And he's a, he's a master when it comes to cinematography. You'll know that if you go watch his videos on Super Danger Studios. Um, but I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about what that means for this show going forward. It was such a really cool thing to not be talking to myself. <laughs> so uh, I've got a lot of plans for guests coming up. Um, so you'll be seeing more of that, uh, more of Alex at some point, I'm sure. Uh, so it's very exciting. But uh, if, you, if you can't wait, um, and if I were you, I wouldn't be able to wait. I'd want to go check out the 45 minute long episode uh, that I do with Alex, our first guest. Uh, so go for it. Check out the membership options. And um, look at that. I got a text message from Alex right there. I wonder what it says. I can't tell you. It's, t- it's talking about when that podcast might go public. So I can't tell you. Obviously, I can't tell you. I have to tease you into getting a membership. <laughs> Don't worry, you don't have to do that. I'm perfectly happy if you've listened this far, subscribed, liked, commented, and shared. Thank you to those of you who are sharing these episodes on Reddit, by the way, and uh, and other places. I see it. I love it. It's great. It's hugely helpful. Until next time, I will talk to you. This has been Everything Mayor. My name is Tom Butwin, and I'll see you next week around this time again.